Hello, good morning. It's been a while, hasn't it? Um, yeah, it's been a long, long time since we've been fishing. Uh, the weather and the wind has been appalling. Um, today I've got half a morning off or half a day off. So we're going to go and try it for some winter flounder. The conditions are not ideal. It's quite warm still for the winter, it's sort of 10 degrees today. Uh, 40 mile an hour wind, there's been a lot of rain over the last few days, so the conditions are not ideal. But I'm fully aware that we've not been out for a while and uh, we've got to try <laughs> to get some fish uh, and get you some content as well. So, first things first, my window is uh, currently not defrosting but um, demisting. We've got a cup of coffee which I need to pour and then. Uh, we're going to go down to Angler's Den Tackle Shop and grab some lugworm. So let's go to the shop and grab our lug. So we're just uh, we're outside Angler's Den now, just waiting for uh, them to open up, which is a little bit early. Um, so yeah, targets they have flounders. Um, I'll talk through the tackle and the rigs and the baits a bit later on, but it's literally going to be a little lugworm. Little hooks, really simple rigs. But what I'm really hoping is the rain stays away so that we can carry on using this lovely camera and actually get some nice footage opposed to using the GoPro which isn't that nice uh, out, out sort of in, in the open so to speak. It's alright when you're action shooting and you're boat fishing but yeah, not so good um, when you're uh, in, in the wide open. So, angles there, just waiting for some lugworm. That was a little painful, a lot of traffic, but we're here now. Uh, we're going to get the gear out of the car and I'll uh, take you down there and I'll show you what we're doing. <laughs> right, so we're at the, uh, the Ada now. Um, some of you will know where we're fishing, some of you won't. If you do know, great. If you don't, it's the River Ada. <laughs> Any part of it will produce flounders, um, even quite far up into the more fresh water. Um, but today we're sort of in the middle where we've got a little bit of the, the flow and a little bit of the fresh water as well. Um, I should talk you through the rigs really quickly. Um, they're super, super simple, as you know with me. We don't complicate things on this channel. We keep things extremely simple. So rigs wise, all we've got is they're just little two hook pattern osters, um, just with I think on these ones we've used little Ultra XT 10s and they're just slightly offset. You'll see there. Let's try and get that to focus in. I don't think it's going to want to. There we go. So there's little, there's the hooks there. Tiny, small little 10s uh, just with barbs. They're slightly offset as well. And all we'll do is we'll bait that with a bit of ragworm and a little bit of lugworm. So we've got two hooks like that. We're going to have the weight down here and to put the weight on we've just got a small, I believe that's a four ounce little grapnel there I've put in there. We put the loop through the, the top of the weight, we pop it over the top of the weight like that and we just pull it tight so it sits along there. And then what we do is we clip our the other end which has got a little loop there up onto the top and cast that out. Really, really simple. One's got a couple of yellow beads on it. One's got nothing, and we'll see what works best. Right, let's get these baited up with a bit of rag and lug, and uh, cast them out. So baiting up, what we're going to do, we've got frozen lug here, and it's still a little bit frozen. We're just going to take about a third off, so we don't need big, don't need a big piece. So that's just a third there. We'll feed that onto the hook, like so. Pop it up just so it's on the shank. So we've got a little bit of lugworm sitting off the hook. Just like that, and then we're going to tip it off with a little bit of ragworm. So we've got some rag there. I'm just going to break that ragworm in half. And I'm just going to tip off the end. Because a ragworm is very, very wiggly. And hopefully it'll enable a flounder to come along. Or even a little bass. There we go. So that is baiting up done with a little bit of lug and a little bit of rag. We'll get the other hook done and we'll cast it out into the middle. So your 
be zoomed into my rod, but we just had a really nice bite. Really, really nice bite. I wouldn't have said that was a bass slit either. It was a bit more of a solid thump. We've only had a rod out there for five minutes, so good, good sign. Nab, nab the bottom ragworm. So, a little bit about flounder fishing then. Normally you want a clear, cold winter's day. Um, I quite like fishing the neap tides here because the flow is less, so you need less weight holding the bottom, it's less debris flowing through the water, so a smaller tide I find is just a little bit more fishable. Um, flounders are very aggressive, so uh, if there's a little bit of a flash, a little bit of a bead in the water, they quite like that. Um, estuaries is where you want to target them mostly. Uh, so we're on the river here, it's not really an estuary, it's, it's a little river where you go out to an inlet. Muddy, muddy, muddy sort of rivers, muddy estuaries. Um, flounders usually will live. Uh, a little bit of lug, a little bit of rag in those winter months. Hopefully you'll fish them. Today we're fishing at slack water and we're going to fish it a few hours up. So the tide at the moment is still going out. Um, it will stay slack for about an hour here uh, and then it will start coming in. And once it comes in, it does come in quite fast and you've only got a couple of hours then. Um, we'll, keep, we'll keep frequently changing our baits every 10 minutes, uh, renew the baits, keep them nice and fresh. And hopefully we'll pull out a fish or two. The sun's out, which is nice for once. So um, yeah, fingers crossed we can pull out a fish or two. So I've come down to my bait box now. We've got our rods set up. Um, We've sorted out all of our kit, it's all tidied away. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare uh, some, some baits. So with a lugworm, as I say, we're going to, um, we're going to basically put it into to thirds. So one whole lugworm, you should get about three baits. So you want to just chop off about three or four centimetres of a lugworm. So we're just going to have a couple on top of the bucket here. It's all about preparation. So that what we can do is hopefully we can make the opportunities uh, run better when, when, they, when the fish turn up the bait's ready, it's already chopped up, we can put it on the hook and it just motivates us to keep changing the bait. If you've got to keep going down into your bait and getting your hands dirty, you, generally you stop doing it. So I've got a few spare rigs here, I'm just going to bait up. Um, so we're going to just chop up some uh, rag and some, and some lug, just so we've got it prepared to put on the hook either when the fish start feeding or when we're changing our baits every so often. Right, so we've been here for about an hour and a half I suppose. Um, we both had one bite which we both missed. Now, as I said earlier, slack water here uh, and flood is best. So slack and two and a half hours after that, I suppose. So, and it's still, it's still pushing out. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of wind against tide actually because the wind is going this way and the tide soon should be coming this way. So it's gonna slow it down a bit. And hopefully slow the, the flow down a bit to give us a little bit longer fishing. Well, that's the idea anyway. Um, as I said, we both had one bite, so hopefully we can convert one or two of them chances um, soon. But it's winter fishing, one or two bites is sometimes what all you can expect. And I'm far from a flounder expert, so um, <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to do what I can do to try and catch something. I'm hopeful. I think, um, I think one of us will get one anyway. <laughs> well, as you can see, it's uh, it's raining now, so we've had to put the nice camera away in the dry bag, uh, and you're back to a GoPro. So you probably will notice the difference in quality. Um, we are struggling here uh, for bites. It's not easy. Um, we have only had two so far, uh, as I said a, a, a minute ago. Tide's still yet to change though, so um, the best part of the tide is still to well, come. Well guys, I'm really, really sorry that we didn't get this on camera. We are having a real chin wag. It's been disgusting wind and rain for hours. We finally got a really, really nice flounder. Um, that's a decent sized one as well. Right, well apologies we didn't, uh, we didn't film this one. Um, 
we were just having a chat it was pouring now with rain as you would have seen a minute ago in that cliff and i'm just refilming this last this little bit just to show you because i didn't know if there'd be water on the lens but we've got a cracking cracking flounder here guys um he's dead he's probably about 34 centimeters something like that absolute beautiful flounder um they got a real real knobbly sort of rough center of flounder so it's soft here but if you rub along that middle line there it's really rough um sometimes people mistake flounders for place because they've got they have actually got sort of dark orange spots but on place they're a lot brighter and i'll say place won't have a won't have a rough middle but absolutely stunning they're beautiful white underneath as well so you'll see a little lot, lot of mud there but they're absolutely white as snow below he's <laughs> he's not happy there we go we'll get a nice photo and uh get that one back to the river but worth the perseverance of the rain the wind the cold um, worth the drive down here because we've come for target species and just as i said with slack water uh, a couple of hours on the flood is usually the best time to target them so there we go we've got our both rods are back out now so yeah great stuff right we've got another bite really good bite on this black rod here just over the other side talking and I've just seen this one absolutely rock it let's have a little look I'm gonna I'm gonna strike into him because he's had a few goes oh, I might have missed that one yeah bait's gone but that's two good bites in the space of a few minutes so um get some more ragworm on hopefully they'll come on the feed get in well, how a mood can change when you're fishing. <laughs> um, yeah, it was horrible wind, horrible rain. And the rain had gone on for much longer than forecast. And uh, yeah, the blue skies are back out again. It's been very on and off. There's a nice, nice, nice bit of sun now. And um, yeah, that lovely, lovely flounder. Really, really pleased with that. Um, and we had a cracking bite uh, a minute ago as well. So hopefully the next half an hour to an hour will hopefully produce you know a few more fish um yeah the tide's coming in quite quickly now um so you never know might all of a sudden switch on we might be able to put a few fish uh on the bank before we go home but isn't it nice when it comes together like that took a lot of effort to get that one fish believe me and a lot of oh can't bother to go out but i know i should <laughs> yeah really really pleased so we'll let it develop, but we've got a bite on the uh, that rod there. There you go, it's gone again. Now that one's only about 10 foot out. Um, so we've got this one, which is on the, the, the one nearer us. I cast that out onto the far bank. Um, so we, we've got, we're, we're a bit away from us, and no disturbance over there all day. So I've cast that further with a rolling weight. And this right hand one, I've, I've kept in quite close. And that's just, that's just had a little knock twice. So hopefully there's a few fish on the feed. There he goes, there he goes. You see that, guys? That's a good little bite there. It's a very, very good little indication. Yeah, we shall see. But yeah, nice, nice bite on that one. So because we had a bite on that one, we're gonna wind that one in, uh, just to make sure the bait's still on it and get that cast back out there, because flounders will attack the bait and it's ragworm, it'll just rip off. So I am gonna strike into it to change the bait and maybe there'll be a fish on, but probably not. One tip I can give you is always strike into the fish like it's a fish, just in case there is one on. Right, so we're coming to the end of our session now. Um, here really after once it starts to flood first two hours about when you want to you know really start working hard um, and after that for some reason the fishing quietens down someone knows why let me know but for some reason 
as it starts flooding the first few, few hours. We had a little nibble on this one, so I'm going to wind this one in, pack this one away slowly, give that one another 10 minutes, and then we're going to head home. So um, let's strike into this one and uh, see if we've got a miraculous lucky fish. I doubt it. Oh, yep, yep, fish on guys, fish on. Hey, <laughs> another little one. <laughs> so that one, we did have a few bites on that one uh, and it stopped just as I, um, <laughs> it stopped just as I uh, come over. But there we go, another little one. Those are on the um, limitless hooks. I think they're on the Ultra, they're Ultra XTs or something. I'll put the link in below. There we go, little flounder. He'd swallowed the hook, so I had to go with little tweezers into the gills and very carefully pick it out. But let's uh, let's let that one back. Just trying to find a place to to go and pop him. I think down here will be all right. Oh, not too steep there. There we go. So there he goes. See you later. So there we go. Two flounder, and we're into our last sort of ten minutes. What I might do is I'm going to bring that one in, rebait it, recast it, and give that 10 more minutes. Um, that wasn't far out either. But yeah, target species, so can't mind. Well, how about that? We uh, last cast saloon and we caught a flounder and I wound into it and I said probably won't have one, but we did. We did have a bite and we obviously I ran over and it, and it stopped. Um, I've struck into it as I always do with every single, even if there's no bite, I always strike into a rod that I'm winding in with a hook on it because you never know if the fish is sitting on it and your strike might just set it and that might have worked then. We're just going to bring in our last rod now. I'll uh, leave this camera rolling just in case there's a, a fish on the end. I don't think there will be, I've not seen any bites on it, but um, yeah, sun's out now, everything's drying off so. We'll go home. I've got lots of jobs to do today. I've got to pick up some, some trees and stuff. So, um, yeah, it's been really, really nice to come out with uh, with Chris, a friend of mine, and, uh, and have a little go in, in January. And there we go. Well, I'd just like to say thank you for watching today's video. Obviously, the first half of it will have been a lot better quality. Uh, probably the audio will be better when I do the edit as well. Um, we've had to use the GoPro in the afternoon because of the constant non-stopping rain uh, and I cannot risk getting that mirrorless camera wet on its first proper outing. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Any comments, uh, leave them below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do. It really helps out. It's free of charge and there's loads of different videos which we do as well over the year to try and help you catch more fish. But uh, obviously today we're using all the uh, limitless hooks and end tackle and I will link some of the descriptions below if you wish to have a look at some of the hooks we were using. Thank you very much and have a good week.